Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're staying safe and healthy out there and hopefully getting out and taking some photos. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week on YouTube where I take photos using various software products and take the photo basically from what it is to what I imagine it to be or want it to be. I love exploring creative options within the software products that we have. And also, I just like to... Uh, you know, share tips and tricks and that sort of thing. The creative thing is really important to me and I explore that a lot. Today's video is a little bit different and that is because it is a photo of the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Now to be clear, it's not my photo, but um, I've had a number of people ask me, hey, can you do some Northern Lights photo editing? And while I was in Iceland earlier this year at the Luminar Photo Camp, and we went out chasing the Aurora a couple of different nights, and saw it one night. What we saw was kind of a thin strip of the Northern Lights passing through an otherwise uh, large, expansive sky. So the photos are okay. I saw it. I can sort of tick the old bucket list, but it wasn't some like great photograph. It wasn't what I had hoped it would be um, because the lights just weren't. You know, it wasn't a super active aurora sort of night. So I've had a number of people comment on my videos and stuff over time, and to say, hey. You know, can you do that? You know, can you do a video about the Aurora, etc.? And the truth is, I haven't really had good photos to do it on. So recently, one of my viewers, Jill Chima, and uh, by the way, her Instagram is Deep in the Heart Photos. I'll put that down there. She was kind enough to offer up a couple of her Aurora photos that she took in Minnesota a few years ago. So um, I started playing around with them, and I had a lot of fun. And this is where I go back to the beginning of where I said I love to do creative things to take a photo from where it is uh, based on the capture to what I want it to be based on my sort of artistic vision. But for photos like this, the Aurora Borealis, and a lot of nature photos, there, there are some nature photos where I kind of do creative things with color and all that, but for something like the Aurora Borealis, I just want to, uh, want to accent what's already there. I mean, it's beautiful, it's stunning. You'll see the photo in a second. It's really beautiful, and I don't want to do super creative, over the top, completely change the look of the photo kind of editing. I just want to enhance what's naturally there. Um, having said that, I didn't see it. It's not my photo, it's Jill's photo, and um, therefore I'm having to make a little bit of an assumption about what it looked like. So there's probably a little bit of creativity in there, but it's mostly about what do I do in Luminar to edit the photo. So I'm gonna stop talking about it and show it to you. Here's the photo. I absolutely just love this photo. Standing in the middle of a train track um, with you know great lines and then the beautiful sky in the background and those little sections of the light going up and that sort of thing. And I turned it into that. So it's not a massive difference. As I said, I want to accentuate whoops, um, what's already there. But you can see like the, uh, the photo is quite a bit brighter. I reduced the noise. I did a few other things. So what I'm going to do is reset my tools here and then jump in and show you how I edited the photo to take it from that base photo to that one. Okay, here we are on the base layer, and the first thing I do is start in the light tool. And here I'm going to like 29, I'm going the wrong way, uh, like 29, 30, something like that. Um, oops, let me just type it in. It's a little bit easier to just type it in. So I'm going to say 29, 35, and the tint I'm going to go to about 11. So again, this is just a basic temperature adjustment, something very simple and straightforward. I do want to add a little bit of contrast, so somewhere around 20 or so and I'm gonna pull the highlights up. This is something I do a couple of times in this video, and that is I wanna make sure I don't lose those little pricks of light of those stars in the, uh, in the night sky. And with the temperature being so blue and any color enhancements and things like that, you can get those to start turning blue. So I think you gotta be careful. So uh, their highlights, I'm pulling them up, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the whites. I'm gonna to go to about 25 or so here. And, you know, again, really basic stuff. There's the before and the after. Next, I'm gonna go to AI Accent, and I'm gonna give that about a 20. Uh, this was effectively just kind of brightening the photo a little bit. Obviously, it was shot in low light, so therefore, it's pretty dark. And with the amount of brightness in the sky from the northern lights, you've got a pretty dark foreground, so this is gonna give you a little bit of boost there. So there's the before and the after. I'm not done with the foreground. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, next up, I'm doing AI structure, and here I'm actually going negative about 30 or so across the entire photo, and that's just kind of softening it up a little bit. Um, the truth is, you're, you're just going to be looking at the sky, 
So if it's a little bit softer in the foreground, personally, I don't really mind. It's not a focal point. I want those lines from the railroad tracks, which, I, like I said, I love the shot. It's great framing. Um, the the lines of the track are just kind of lead you kind of through the photo. So um, I'm going to work on that foreground a little bit. But if it's a little bit soft, it doesn't matter to me. And also because it's you know this is theoretically late at night, uh, certainly you know sometime um, reasonably late at night because it's so dark. But um, the fact that it's dark also, if it's a little bit softer in the foreground, doesn't bother me. So that's that. Um, next up, here's a place where I would probably take your time. And by the way, every Northern Lights photo is going to be different. Of course, it's not like you're taking a picture of a building and it's always going to be the same building. The Northern Lights are going to look different, even from photo to photo, maybe just minutes apart. Um, so what I did here is I came into the green and I really love those those green streaks. So I just pulled the saturation of those up into kind of the mid 30s. I kind of want to pop those a little bit. And then I took the luminance up a little bit as well. So like a nine or 10, I just made them a little bit more saturated and a little bit brighter. And then for the blue, I popped over here to the blue and I also took the luminance up a little bit. Um, and that's brightening the sky, which is something else I'm trying to achieve in this photo. So there's the before and the after of everything. Let me show you if I just do the color tool. There it is before the color adjustments and after. So not a massive difference. Again, this is not Jim trying to say, hey, take it from this and turn it completely around into this other thing. Again, I'm trying to enhance the natural beauty. Y y you know, There's no, no point, I think, in trying to completely overhaul something as, as, as gorgeous as that, my opinion. So um, that's it for color. Next up is denoise. And so um, if you zoom in here, I mean, this was shot at ISO 2500, low light, right? It was obviously on a tripod because it's, a, it's a, a few second exposure, but you got a little bit of noise there. I actually, um, I use the noise, uh, here we go, 40 and I, oops, um, let me get back to edit and also put a 40 here. Uh, 40. Um, and that was just through experimentation, but basically I just wanted to pull down a little bit of that graininess that's coming from the noise. Uh, you know, if you look at it before, there it is. And after, use a little bit of the luminosity, which is going to be more about the brighter parts and the color denoise. And I think together they came in really handy on this shot. Okay, so back out, uh, there's the before and after. I think we're getting there. Uh, the next thing I did is actually go to Landscape Enhancer and I actually pulled up Golden Hour a little bit, like a 20 or so. I just gave it a tiny bit of warmth. That applies globally, but, but mostly you see a little bit like in the, uh, the gravel that's around the train tracks, but not a lot. You see a little bit, it impacts, impacts the greens a tiny bit. It's very subtle, you may not even notice it. It's just something I kind of did. Uh, and then I jumped over here to adjustable gradient on the pro tab. And the first thing I'm doing is collapsing this to uh, a very thin horizon uh, or a very thin gradient zone, I should say. And then placing this down here around the horizon, something about like that and say done. And for the top, I don't do anything. The bottom, I'm bumping up the exposure to like, you know, 37, 38. That's trying to get a little bit more visibility into that foreground. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast as well, just to keep it kind of real. So maybe like a 10 or 15. Uh, and then I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit, uh, like maybe a 10. So not a massive difference, but if you look at the before and the after, I'm just brightening up the foreground a little bit because I like those lines. I want a little bit of visibility into that, even if it's a little bit soft, which I did with the negative structure on the first tab. Um, and then I come into Dodge and Burn. And the one thing I like about these lines is, you know, it's kind of going straight down the middle, basically. They look great and they're a good way to lead the eye, but I want to brighten them a little bit. So I'm going to come in here with the strength of about, let's say like around 20 uh, and I'm on lighten and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change the size of my mouse. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint a little bit more lightning here just so that you can have a little bit more visibility into this section of the photo. So again, it's a great leading line. It's well shot. It's a great choice, I think. And um, I just want to brighten it up a little bit more to really continue to like, you know, I think you're naturally going to see that, that and those lines are going to draw you into the photo and they kind of draw you into the, uh, into the, uh, the Northern Lights. But I wanted to add a little bit more brightness there. So there it is before Dodge and Burn and there it is after just a tiny smidge of a 20, uh, just brightening it a little bit. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna add one more adjustment layer to do a couple of more minor edits. 
Okay, and what I'm gonna do is get over here to the light tool and I'm gonna go straight into highlights and whites. I'm pump, pumping up the highlights at like a 27 or 28 and the whites, I gotta check here, they're going up about 39 or 40. And so that is brightening the sky again. That's kind of where the brighter parts are plus the way it reflects on these rail lines. I really like that, it just kind of looks cool to me. So let me turn this layer off. There it is before and there it is after. You can see it's a bit brighter. And again, this is another attempt on my part to make sure you don't lose those stars because I don't want it to be too blue that they're excluded or kind of uh, hidden. And I definitely don't want them to just turn blue on me because there's so much blue in the sky. So I'm bringing back the whites and the highlights and trying to pop them a little bit more. So I think that does a good job of also just lifting the exposure of the sky and really giving you a nice little view. And the next thing I do is really just go into the eraser tool. And there's a few things things along here like this lights a little bit distracting and that sign and that um, and then this little piece of uh, I don't know if that's trash or just something that's in the rail um, uh, on the railroad track but I'm gonna go ahead and use the eraser and get rid of those as well okay so I finished all my erasing I pulled a number of uh, small things out over here uh, something in the tracks as I talked about and some of those things on that left horizon so if you look at the before you can see the light over here and this sign and like a billboard, something on the track here and a few rocks over here on the right side of the track. And then the after, I'm getting rid of all that. Again, I'm just clearing up the foreground and any distracting elements because the only thing I wanna look at here is I want this line to take me straight to the Northern Lights. And it looks great. Again, great shot, Jill. Um, the only other thing I did is I came over here to AI Accent and I gave that one more little bump uh, of about a 20 or so. And that's just because I just can't stop editing is really what it's because of. But if I turn that off, there's the before and the after. A little bit more light into the foreground and a little bit brighter in the sky. Optional, of course, but here's the before and here's the after. And if you do a sliding before and after, I think we've come a really long way. I love the photo. I think it's well taken and I think it's a gorgeous scene. And, uh, you know, I kind of like my edit. And so uh, hopefully that's helpful. Having done this, I will say that I've seen a lot of different Northern Lights photos over the years, as you probably have, and every one of them is different, of course, because it's a natural phenomenon that's being photographed. So it's gonna change from moment to moment, as I said. That means, for me, it's like, I don't know that I can say, here's how you edit a Northern Lights photo. This is like an example of an edit for this Northern Lights photo. Hope there's a, it's clear the distinction there. Uh, I definitely think watch the highlights and the whites uh, because you're gonna be picking up stars and try to keep those um, visible as I did here. Watch your blues and try to bring up the greens if you can. And then, you know, depending on your foreground, you may wanna brighten that a little bit as I did here. Also, I've seen a lot of Northern Lights photos where they're reflected, like uh, a lot of ones like from Norway and Iceland where they're reflected in a lagoon or whatever, and that probably presents a different set of circumstances that would be incredibly fun to edit, I'm sure. So anyway, that is a Northern Lights or, or Aurora Borealis workflow a example. Here it is before and after brought up the lights, brought up the colors. It's really a beautiful scene. So thank you again, Jill, for letting me uh, edit your photo. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I hope that this was helpful and may give, maybe it gives you some ideas for your own Northern Lights photos. And other than that, my friends, I'm signing off. So I'll see you again really soon. You guys have a great day. Take care of yourselves and adios.